Hey, welcome everyone to our webinar today. We have two very special guests. The topic will be, maybe actually we have three special guests. Um, uh, the topic today is Timorazo. We have two of the leading producers, two of the top female producers of Timorazo. We have Elisa Semino. Ciao, Elisa. Ciao. And we have Elena Curado from Elena Pena, excuse me, from Pieti. Ciao. Ciao. So I, I already said before we started this that the two of you could almost pass for sisters. And you both have very short hair. And you have similar glasses. So I'm going to, and you have Elisa and Elena. So at some point, I'm going to make a mistake. So please forgive me. I'm sure that's going to happen. Don't worry. Try not to, but no I'm happy to maybe say because Elisa is much younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> so for okay. me, it's fine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> But you're, but, but you're both very young, so, okay. And and uh, we have one thing we have to get straight right away is Elisa is always referred to as the queen of Timorazo. Wow. If, that, if that's okay, Elisa. So, Elena, what, what should we call you? Nothing. <laughs> I, 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 just Elena. <laughs> oh, just Elena, okay, that, that'll work. No, no, of Timoras, no, no, of Timoras, because there is only one queen of Timoras. Okay. That's enough. <laughs> All right. All right. No, well, just, I'll, that, just a huge, huge lover of Timoras, actually. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll try and switch back and forth and keep both of you, you know, involved here. So, we, uh, Elise has been doing this a little bit longer, but let me first put up, and Elise, if you can describe this. Put up a map so everybody knows the area yeah. we're talking about. Yes. Uh, one second here. It's a map uh, of uh, Colli Tortonesi, our area. And, I, I, uh, I, I, I've got one here that I'll, I'll show, and then we can look at on yours too. So give me one second here. Oh, sorry. Yeah. That's all right. It's a, a, a big map because uh, the people don't know the area, right. Colli Tortonesi. Okay. I just put this up on the screen. Oh, perfect. Thank so you. You, okay. you can see on the top left the area. This is the province of Alessandria in Piemonte. Yeah. You can see Asti, Alessandria. Uh, we're in southeast of Piemonte, and you see Genoa there in Liguria. So, and then the, the, the big map is the area there. So, can you tell us a little bit about this area and where you're located? Yeah. And uh, you look, this is a map of Colito Torresi, it's a big area. We are um, at the, the up of, of this area. We are so near Tortona. Tortona is uh, a town of uh, this area. And we are in Vo, um, in the middle uh, to Tortona and uh, Sarezzano. And uh, Vo is the second hills near Tortona because Tortona have uh, seven different hills uh, similar to Rome. And in Tortona, right? yeah. In Tortona, there were the, the dominion of Roman, and uh, Romans say Tortona is the little Roma, and the name Dertona, the origin, he is the little Roma from uh, Roman dominion. Oh, yes. And uh, yes. Tortona and Colli Tortonesi is the door of Piedmont because uh, in, the, in the southeast of Piedmont is the first part, is the spur of Piedmont. But in Tortona, Begin the Tortoniano soil, the name Tortona and Tortoniano right. is the soil uh, of okay. Tortona. Okay. The, right. Yes. And uh, begin in Tortona in Colli Tortonesi and arrive to Elena, arrive to Barolo. And um, um, starts in Tortona. And uh, it's very, very important for our area. Okay. And uh, because characterizing our wine. So, Elena, th so this is the same Tortonian soil that is in. in the yes, exactly. Th okay. This is a, a very, co a very, you know, a, a part of the, a thing that uh, uh, create uh, a, a link between, <laughs> honestly, the two area. And this is uh, really, really interesting because the Tortonian soil is uh, a soil that uh, we can find uh, in the area of Barolo where uh, our winery actually is because uh, the Vieti is a winery based in uh, Castiglione Falletto in the, in the area of Barolo. 
So we started uh, with, uh, with Timorasso quite recently, <laughs> uh, thanks to, uh, you know, producer like uh, Elisa, La Colombera and other that were uh, strongly believing in this varietal and were able, uh, you know, to, uh, to, to rediscover and to, uh, to vinify. Uh, thank, thank, thanks God, uh, this, this beautiful, uh, incredible uh, varietal. So, the one of the point uh, beside many others uh, that really uh, is a common uh, point uh, between uh, the Tortona, the, the Colli Tortonesi and the Barolo region is really the this kind of soil that we can find uh, in uh, in our in our area as well so is uh, you know is always Piemonte 100 kilometer far away uh, but the, the soil is part of the soil of the Barolo region okay. is the same soil of the Colli, geologically is the same soil of the Colli Tortonesi. Uh, if you think about the Marne di Sant'Agata, for example, uh, which are in La Morra. Right. There is the Sant'Agata also in the Colli Tortonesi. So the, the relation between the name of the village in, uh, in the Colli Tortonesi and the Marne di Sant'Agata that are uh, characteristic of the soil, especially in La Morra, which is one of the villages within the Barolo area, uh, let you understand how so, uh, many common things uh, there are uh, between uh, the two, the two regions. And this right, is I, very, you know, right, I, very I nice. I, it's a, I did a webinar with, with uh, uh, Francesco uh, Bellocchio from Marina Coppi and his wife Anna, and they mentioned and visited them that they had that, 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 that the Sant'Agata San Maral soils, just like you have yeah. in, yeah. in Marola. So. Francesco is very near yes. to Sant'Agata village. Is he? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Francesco is very, very near to Sant'Agata. Yes. Yes. And then, of course, even though the soils are similar, Timorasso would not be the same wine if it were grown in the Longue because you're in Colle Tortonesi, which is much further south and east, not far from Liguria, not far from the sea. So it's, uh, you keep a lot more freshness that way and, and a little bit higher acidity. So uh, Lisa, how, how long has Timorasso been planted? I, I, I understand it, it was almost extinct for a while and then the, I guess Walter Massa brought it back, but tell us a little bit about the history. But Walter Massa is the father. And planted them many years ago, and um, my father and I planted Timorasso in 1997. Uh, is the, the first time is 1997, and the first label Dertona is was uh, uh, 2000, and uh, because uh, in uh, Vo in our hills. Uh, uh, we have uh, in past uh, many red grape and uh, okay we have a little part of Cortese but never Timorasso okay. because Timorasso loves uh, the white uh, um, soil right. and loves uh, a very uh, warm climate. The big difference to Tortona and, um, uh, and Langa is the climate. Uh, yes. <laughs> very, very different. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> in Tortona is very, very warm and less rain. Okay. And uh, the, the, the big difference is, uh, is the climate. In fact, and, uh, yesterday, yeah. yesterday yeah. we had a big flood, <laughs> yeah. 70 millimeters of rain, and oh. uh, in your area just uh, maybe two, two or three. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's a big difference. Yes. 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 We are also much closer to the Alps, and this is uh, a huge uh, you know, influence on the climate uh, for the Barolo region, so for sure uh, red varieties in the Barolo region, they need more uh, you know, cool weather. Yes. Elena, I'm going to go back to this map. Where, where are your vineyards on this map? But this map you cannot uh, see basically because it's uh, west uh, from this map. Uh, okay. uh, you see Asti. You cannot see actually Alba and uh, right, right. You know, the area of uh, Barolo, but it's uh, basically 100 kilometers west from uh, and a little bit north from uh, Tortona. Uh, right. So we are very cl much closer to the French border, to give you an idea. 
Okay. Very close yeah. to the big uh, Alps uh, chains. So for us also the Liguria Sea is uh, quite close because we are uh, one hour driving uh, south uh, to, to Liguria uh, and one hour uh, from the big, uh, you know, from the big mountain. So we can get uh, the great influence, of course, from the seaside, but uh, we have uh, also the wind, the fresh air that comes down from the Alps uh, that, uh, you know, for, for, for varietal uh, like the Nebbiolo, uh, is uh, incredible uh, in, important because it, it's okay to have uh, you know nice uh, warm uh, day time but uh, in the evening uh, to have uh, cooler temp let's say better no right. mm -hmm. yeah. I, just put, I just put up a picture of one of your vineyards the picture you sent me Tell us about the soils here and about how many meters above sea level is this vineyard and how yeah, we, we have uh, we have the vineyards uh, that w our project uh, is uh, as I was saying is a new project. so came out uh, last year with the vintage 2018 even if uh, we were doing uh, some uh, you know proof. Uh, for the past, uh, the previous four years, because for us, Timorasso was a new wine, a new project. And so we, we needed to, to handle with this new grape varietal. And so we did uh, four years of uh, experiment, let's say, uh, without uh, releasing the wine. Uh, and then uh, we released the very first vintage of the uh, AT Timorasso in uh, 2018. So right now, right now, sorry, right now the, the hectares that we have are about seven hectares. That okay, we, we've lost you a few uh, times. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Ella. We lost you a few times here. I don't know if that's it. Maybe sorry, eight. at seven hectares. We lost uh, you at seven hectares. Ah, okay, so seven hectares, that should be around uh, 16 acres, more or less, okay? okay. But, and the project is uh, to arrive uh, to 18, 20 hectares uh, altogether, between okay. Molleale and Bo, where uh, Elisa is, and, uh, you know, we, we were very grateful to Elisa and to also Walter Massa, uh, all these uh, nice uh, friends uh, that we were able to, to meet uh, there because they really helped uh, us uh, a lot. And this is uh, really, I want to say, uh, this is the most beautiful part uh, of our project, the people, because the land uh, is spectacular. Yeah. The wine is incredible. The varietal is uh, amazing. But the people over there are, uh, you know, superb. <laughs> and uh, really... <laughs> No, really, is uh, you know, best, huh? uh, I felt in, I felt in love uh, with the area. I felt in love with uh, all the people there because uh, is is a group uh, that uh, you know they they need uh, we need all to do a lot of things, uh, but there is this uh, still uh, you know way. Uh, uh, the 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 idea to do still many things, uh, but uh, with all this passion, uh, this. Uh, Co right, well, co cooperation uh, uh, that sometimes uh, in our area right now is missing because uh, Barolo region, as you know, is uh, <laughs> is what it is. Uh, and uh, of course, in the past also for us, it was not like this, but in this right. moment, uh, we are lucky that the name of Barolo and the Barbaresco uh, around the world uh, is known. Timorasso is uh, known already a lot, uh, but uh, needs to still, uh, you know, to be discovered and to have uh, really the right uh, place that deserve. Because Simoras is an amazing, incredible example of uh, white uh, variety. So thanks to these uh, really beautiful people uh, in the area that were able before to, of course, to not to save, <laughs> let's say, and to replant uh, and right. to trust uh, right. uh, this, uh, this varietal, we, of course, uh, were able to, to invest also there uh, thanks to them and the help uh, that these people, uh, uh, this person uh, gave us uh, to, to release, uh, to, to realize our uh, you know, small uh, uh, project and to, you know, to, to help with our, with our passion. So this is for sure 
Everything is, is incredible, but over there, if you will be able to visit the region, if somebody never did before or uh, will have to will come uh, in Piemonte, should for sure go because it's, uh, it's incredible. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, you had a great advertisement there. You should get paid by these people for, for being No, there. no, no, I'm but kidding. it's true. I I'm mean, kidding. It's, I'm it's, kidding. It's, uh, yeah. It's really, it's really, you know, I, I, I do, I do this advertising because I trust, because it's like this, uh, so it's, uh, the passion that over there they have, uh, not because here we do not have, but, uh, you know, the region is uh, now what it is uh, in Barolo and uh, is easier now. Uh, over there, uh, there are still many things to do, but I think uh, that uh, people, uh, they have so much passion uh, and really the white the, the wine can can arrive to a very high uh, level point that uh, i mean i think is is very stimulating echo yeah. it's very stimulating i would i would agree with you and I, and going back to what you said it's it, yeah everyone is passionate in Piemonte. so you're, you're with your barolo with barbaresco with other wines everyone there's passionate and of course they're world famous Timorasso is not world famous yet, except to a small group, and it, but it will be, and, but it's certainly the quality is, is outstanding. And I think that's just human nature that when, when your products aren't as famous, you work a little harder. And like you said, the people are really nice and very passionate. So you just have that little bit extra uh, incentive to, to get uh, people to, to try your wine and, and to, to enjoy it and to write about it. So. Of course, of course, uh, we need all to spend a lot of words, a lot of uh, you know time to explain and to to have people uh, you know to 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 try and to to believe, uh, of course, in the in the in this wine. But I think that uh, really we can have a great potentiality. I'm I'm sure. And uh, this is it a, is a for sure. Uh, it's already known everywhere. <laughs> And uh, your work is incredible for us because the, the, Timora, the people don't know Tiborasso and Elena Luca around the world and uh, speak about the Timorasso and the people understand the Timorasso and okay, we test different Timorasso and we are lucky uh, right. because now oh, more, uh, more people in New York, in Chicago, in San Francisco, okay, right. what is this Timorasso? And take how are very curious, no? Timorasso. Sorry? They are very curious to taste. Yes. And that's good. Yes, it's important. Yes. Very, very important. Elisa, I'm going to put up one of the photos you sent me. And this is proof that Timorasso okay. is, is great for everyone. And you don't have to be an adult to enjoy okay. Timorasso. <laughs> I, yeah. love I, I love this it's photo. Cool. Tell, tell, me, tell, me, tell me who this is in the photo. Yes, yes, the baby. Yes, <laughs> three, three years. No, see, yes, three years ago. Yes. Okay. My son and the daughter of my brother. Yes, yes. Okay, that's that's a great yes. picture. The I future. Just, that's, <laughs> I, that's think, the, I hope the future. Yes. Yes. But no, that's a great picture. So let me, let me. Thank you. We'll, I'll put up some more pictures of your vineyards. But let, let, tell me first of all. This is a question I get all the time. Yeah. So, People label it as Timorasso. Some people label the wine as Dertona. What is the difference? What, is the, the, what are the regulations and, and why the different names? Yeah. Now, we, with the consortium, we ask a new, a new doc, a new denomination, because uh, we have called it Tortonesi Timorasso from 2005. But for us, it's important now uh, have Dertona, Timorasso. Uh, and Dertona is the, the name of the town of Tortona. And uh, mm, we are, um, we decide to take this name because the origin of Timorasso is Tortona. Okay. And uh, many famous producers arrive here and believe in this area. And uh, okay, and for us, the best choice is. Uh, take this name and use with the denomination um, similar to Gavi, similar to Barolo. Of course. Uh, we, Tortona is Tortona, it's not uh, Dertona, it's Dertona in past. 
but uh, Walter Massa likes this name, all producers like this name, and our project is uh, Dertona Dream eh? in 2000. And uh, okay, we chose this, uh, this name for the new denomination of Dertona. Yes. And it, it can be labeled that way now, or do you have to wait a little, another year or two? Or? Now we have uh, two different labels, Dertona and Montino, because uh, uh, now the denomination is Colli Tortonesi Timorasso. And uh, we have Dertona since 2000, and we use Dertona um, for, um, uh, uh, yes, thank you, for uh, uh, our white wine Timorasso, and we use uh, seven different vineyards for this uh, wine. And Il Montino for us is singular vineyards when we have the best grape. Yes, thank you. And um, the best grape and uh, is the only singular vineyard. And the way making for Dertone and Montino is, uh, is the same, only stainless steel without wood. Okay. And uh, yes. Let's, let's, take a look at, let's take a look at some of the vineyards, the pictures that you sent me. So, or actually, there is. Uh, here's, here's a beautiful picture of some very ripe clusters. Oh, beautiful. Yes. Yeah. La, the, the grape is last year. Last year is very beautiful grape. And in last summer, we have a, a very um, good time with Luca and Elena and his staff in the winery. And we test a lot of uh, vintage of Timorasso and uh, we take the analysis. And okay, we have uh, a good analysis, but with the warm uh, 16, 17, 18, we have uh, a little uh, lower acidity. Okay. And last year, we have uh, the same acidity in 2004, 2005, uh, a very, very good acidity. And when uh, in October, I checked the, the analysis, it's, wow, it's incredible for the white wine, very long life. And I love this acidity, I, acidity, I love this freshness. And uh, uh, Elena and Luca, we, we studied the analysis in the summer and uh, uh, we have a, a, a big surprise uh, in last uh, Land Vintage because uh, it's very, very interesting. Uh, uh, yeah. And, when, and uh, you know, uh, the, um, the bench of this variety and have a, a, big, uh, a big grape, but it's very good uh, to taste and, but it's, uh, and it's very good to, to make the wine. It's uh, not easy for the, the white wine, the white grape, sorry. And what, what, what is your current release on these two wines, on the Montino and the Dertona? Are they 2020, <clears throat> yeah. then as you talked about, are you going to release that this year or next year? Or? I don't, uh, in 2000? No, you mentioned 2020 was a great harvest, so. Yes, those... well, it's very good uh, harvest, right. 2000. Yes. Right, I, have you released the 2020 wines yet or will that be next year or? Uh, sorry, I don't understand. Se, se quando, quando, fai, cioè quando, release, quando metti in commercio il 2020. Ah, sorry, sorry. Right. And right. Uh, il thank, uh, you. Uh, uh, sorry, thank you. And uh, 2020, uh, going a bottle in 10 days, I'm going a bottle in the end of July. And for Dertona, I think in uh, November. Okay. And uh, in Montino, one year and go to set. Yeah, okay. Sorry. And now I did a tasting last year. The consortium was very nice and sent me about 25 wines. And I tasted it with a number of, of the wine buyers here in Chicago. And Paolo Ciruti was, was one of the people that was at the tasting. And Paolo was watching today. Ciao, Paolo. But we all noticed that the wines change very much. You know, when they're, when they're very young, there's a lot of beautiful, you know, green fruit and melon fruit, and things like that. And when they get five or seven or 10 years older, they change, they're more herbaceous and things. So do you want to talk about that? Because the wines are really beautiful when they're old. Yes. When it's young, it's very honey, fruity, but with time, the minerality arrive and change a lot, develop in uh, hydrocarbon. It's uh, very different in time in bottle. I have a couple of questions here from Cheryl. This is, this is for, yeah. for either of you. She wants to know, um, I don't know if she might have made a 
she asked about Timorasso vines in Barolo, but I, there, there aren't any Timorasso vines in Barolo, are there? No, no, no. You no. talk about the no. soil, it's the same, yeah. Yes, yes, no, is a, is a, we are in Barolo as a winery because we make Barolo, Barbaresco, Barbera, all the other varietal the, of the Barolo region. But Timorasso, no, in Barolo is not, uh, yeah. not planted. So we had to move in the Colli Tortonesi and to buy land uh, there to make Timorasso for sure. Okay. And when we were when we were looking for a new so when we were looking, we're thinking about the white wine uh, for for Vietti next to the Arnais, uh, which uh, we make uh, since a very long time, and we are one of the pioneer uh, of right. uh, the Arnais production because my father-in-law is sixty-seven, uh, made for the very first time uh, the the Arnais uh, as a, a white wine uh, uh, yeah. dry yeah. and pure. Maybe for fifty years, right? Over exactly. Years. So. Oh. Uh, uh, so we decided for the Timorasso, for the love of Timorasso, but really because we were you know, reflecting all uh, what we were uh, thinking. Uh, autochthon varietal, Piemontese varietal, uh, a varietal that uh, can give wines for, you know, for aging uh, uh, very, very long, uh, for very long time. And so was very close to, is very close to the philosophy of, uh, our wine, so we have Barolo that can age for a very long time, sure. and uh, really Timorasso can be a wine, as uh, Lisa was saying as well, with the lo a longevity that uh, is amazing. And as long as it stays in the bottle, uh, honestly, better becomes. <laughs> I agree, Elena. I, I, I was going to ask us. I mean, since you were so famous for Roero Arnais, and then you said you, you want another white. I mean, did you? Was there ever a thought that, you know? You might lose some business with the Rorero or Nace. Since no, no, are two different wines completely. Okay. Uh, it's, it's really two different worlds. Uh, I don't think there is any conflict uh, between, uh, between the two. Uh, of course, uh, as a philosophy of uh, our winery, we have been uh, really loving always uh, the autochthon varietal, so we were not interested to look for an international varietal or to go, you know, for the moment outside of uh, Piemonte. Right. And so when we, we thought about uh, a white wine, uh, immediately our thoughts went to uh, the Timorasso varietal because uh, had always all, had all the characteristic that uh, honestly we were looking uh, for a new white uh, wine. No, I don't think, uh, and we didn't honestly had any, actually Arnais, uh, I, I should say that uh, in the last, uh, even if uh, there was a COVID, uh, we had uh, an increase in sales uh, of the Arnais, uh, because I think that in this moment, people, also the Arnais is uh, a little bit more known than the Timorasso, than the Timorasso but uh, sometimes it happens to me when I travel around uh, the world that uh, you do the tasting, and uh, if you have all the, bar the red and the, the arnais, uh, people say, "Are oh, you make also white wine in Piemonte?" Very, <laughs> <I> say, yes. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Amazing, yeah, incredible. Yeah, yeah. Yes. in Piemonte, <laughs> actually, in the in the area where we are. So yes, it is also very old, uh, you know. So even if it's uh, you know more known uh, right now than the Timoras around the world, uh, anyway, when people think about uh, our area, they think about. Uh, be the red wines, you know, and so <laughs> for the white, uh, you need always to talk uh, for sure more and more and more. That's, uh, but I don't think that Timoras and Arnais uh, will have uh, any conflict. Uh, okay. We didn't see this, uh, and uh, honestly, I do not see any problem for the future because there are two different uh, things. Also, things about that the Arnais production is huge. Okay. Now, so it's big for the, you know, for the Timorasso and especially for the Dertona, the, the things are, Elisa, can you, you know, it's very, very small. It's yeah. very small. And uh, I think that uh, often the idea of all the producer involved uh, in uh, the area of Timorasso, of the Colli Tortonesi, is uh, to create uh, something always very special, unique, small, like, uh, Really, the Barolo area is so. Yeah. Dertone right. should have imagine of Dertone 
like Barolo, no? Okay. Uh, Timorasso, yeah. like Nebbiolo, and Bertone, like Barolo. This is for me, but I think is, uh, you know, the, the same for, for Elisa and for the other yeah. producer, to keep uh, really this uh, very, you know, exclusive, no? Yeah. Very... Yes. Right. Now in the world, there are uh, 200 hectares of Timorasso and um, 60 producers. 60 producers, okay. Very, very small quantities. Small. Of and Elisa, how many producers were when you started? Uh, five. Oh. <laughs> In 2005. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's, that's a huge increase in just, in just 20 years. So that's, that's terrific. So. Yeah. Yes, five. But, but if I remember well, when we started, when we started uh, with the Timorasso, yeah. the producer were around 18, 20 or no? Or, or but uh, remember when. three or four years ago, um, uh, was uh, were um, uh, forty or fifty, but no more. Uh, now more producer likes arrives. Yes, now more producer arrive. Let yeah, me. Yeah. This is a question, Elisa, for you first for you, and then also for Elena. But one of the first times I tried Timorasso when I was in the area at a restaurant, I, I had another producer, very very good producer. And it reminded me a little bit of like a, a premier cru or a grand cru chablis with a, a lot of minerality and it had it, it's not chardonnay of course it's timorasso but it had some of those same characteristics um do you agree with that or that, what, what how, how would you describe timorasso Elisa? Elisa, I do. for me ah sorry yes yes i'm sorry sorry right. yes more people say it's similar to amazing white wine in France. And um, in my opinion, Tim Russell have his character because uh, if you um, taste Tim Russell at the, at the, the flavor, uh, you remember the, the Riesling in uh, yes. when it's not when it's young, but when it's old. But right. if you taste Tim Russell, you think to Chablis or uh, a good white wine or uh, um, some verdicchio, I think. And it's, uh, it's very, it's, um, uh, Timorasso grape mm -hmm. is a unique family. Is uh, a family is singular grape, uh, event different, is not uh, crossing, is a very unique, uh, unique family of grape, a unique clone. And um, in, uh, in my experience is uh, need more time in bottle. When it's young, okay, it's good, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's young, <laughs> but uh, with time in bottle, uh, arrive uh, and uh, explain his, uh, his minerality, explain his characteristics. Depend uh, the area, call it Ortonesi, when, uh, when it's plant, but uh, um, need more time in bottle. Okay. Elena, I, I, I agree. Noticed... With... Sorry, go ahead, Greg. No, I agree completely with, uh, with Elisa. Uh, Timorasso can, uh, for, of course, uh, as long as stays in battle, better become is incredible. How it changes and changes and changes. And then uh, I think that it can stand really with, uh, you know, with the uh, top uh, <laughs> white wine. Uh, it's not a Chardonnay, of course, as you were saying, uh, but... Uh, is a is a white wine that can stand really nicely to very important uh, uh, white from uh, you know wow. also from outside of Italy. And to me, uh, I always uh, you know we always like to you know to to compare a little bit to Chenin Blanc as a, as a okay. varietal as as a kind of uh, wine maybe and. and and on, on our idea is uh, to imagine uh, really the, the area of uh, uh, Dertona in this uh, you know, small project has to become a little bit of, like uh, the Hermitage. <laughs> Land. Interesting. Now, Why not? Elena, uh, Why Elisa, not? <laughs> yeah. Elena, Elisa talked about last year with, the, with 2020 was a great, great vintage. So You've just produced at Vietti 2018 and 2019. And yeah, I've you know, tried... we, we just released the 19, uh, 
recently. Okay, yeah. I, I, Only two vintages for now. Yeah, I, I, I have not tasted the 2019 yet, I guess, you know, with a lot of shipping from Europe and things, there's been problems. So, but tell me the difference between those two vintages. But on our, on our, on our uh, Timoras, I find it, that the 19 a little bit more, uh, you know, fuller body compared to the, to the 18. Okay. Uh, and in fact, the, our 18 was, uh, you know, very straight uh, and very uh, bright, uh, uh, nice bright minerality starting from, from the, the beginning. On the 19, I find a little bit more complexity little bit more, you know, bigger shoulder, uh, more, uh, more full also in the palate. And that's why uh, the 19, uh, and now that has uh, some months more in battle, uh, start to develop uh, in a different way. So it's okay. really, you appreciate uh, the characteristic of this wine, uh, Yes, in the immediate because it's beautiful, right. but uh, really with uh, some more time uh, in the bottle. In, in certain cases, for example, I suggest, I don't know if uh, Elisa do the same uh, or it is uh, worth uh, to do, but uh, I really prefer to sometimes decant. Uh, so double decant, you know, you decant okay. and you put again. Because brief, uh, brief a little bit, opens up a little bit. Uh, you know, yeah. if you want to enjoy, of course, uh, more in the media. But two yes. beautiful vintages, after, yeah. actually. Eh? Mm. 2020 was uh, particularly very good, but uh, we do not have uh, we do not have yet the, the 2020 right. 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 And Elisa, what, what about your Timorasso from 2018 and 2019? How, how are they tasting? How do they differ? I, um, I love the 18 and 19, 19 because uh, uh, 16, 17 uh, and 15 is very, very warm, very big. Right. And um, 17 is nervous, but no more. And uh, 19 uh, is very balanced and uh, is very full body, is a very good vintage. And uh, 18 is uh, elegance and finest. And yes. uh, now in this moment, I think 17, 18 is a good time for the beginning, the, 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 the testing, you know? And uh, eight, 19, okay, we, we, um, no, no, we have no more bottle of 19, but um, it is a vintage, the people love this uh, vintage right. because it's very full body is around. And uh, yes, no more alcohol, he's uh, 14. Okay. But uh, it's perfect uh, for. Uh, how many but it's very balanced. Uh, how many, how yes. many bottles do you produce in a typical year? For the Artona, we produce uh, 30,000 bottles. Okay. And for Montino, 5,000 bottles. Yeah, and do you, do you export much to, to the United we States? We export uh, to US and Canada. Okay. And uh, more we, uh, we sell in Italy. Yes, and in Europe, in different point in uh, Holland or Belgium, in uh, okay. Europe. All right. Yeah. And um, while we're on differences of vintages, you've been doing this a little bit longer than Elena. But uh, of the older vintages that you have now, what what really tastes great? What, what's yeah. your wine to drink right now of the, of the older wines? Tutte, Elisa. Yeah, tutte, tutte, si, si. <laughs> No, le tue, tutte, tutte le nate vecchie sono tutte buone. Le mie, dici? Eh, eh. Cioè io non le ho. Certamente, <laughs> certamente. We test together. Sì. We test together. No, oh. I love uh, 2006. It's incredible Six. vintage. 2009. And uh, oh, two days ago, I opened uh, 14, che è uh, terrible uh, vintage, but uh, for my... Oh. This is an importer and wow, incredible. Yes, and uh, I, I have uh, 19 uh, Dertona Montino. We test uh, this and we test uh, Barbera Moleale and uh, Barbera Elisa. And okay. after we test 14. Okay. And, uh, uh, people yeah. always say, yeah, I hear that too often that uh, 2014 terrible vintage, but I thought it was excellent, especially, you know, there's such great acidity. The wines have structure that can age for such a long time. So 
they're not powerful wines. No, but they're 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 almost kind of like wines used to be made in Piemonte, right? They're they're very very typical, very traditional. And, and Elena, I, I noticed that you make your wines with a little bit of oak influence. Can you a little bit differently than than Elisa does? Because you, I was reading. Uh, no, no, actually. Actually, but we we do not only oak. We do three right. different uh, right. vats. Let's say right. we do stainless steel. We do as a visa. We do um, ceramic. Okay. And and we do wood. So we 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 do a mix: a large cask, a Slovenian oak cask, uh, then ceramic. Which has been very interesting, you know, an interesting uh, discover. What, what, what size they, are those ceramic casks? The ceramic are uh, uh, five, five or six hectoliters. Okay. And are the oval size, but right. it's not because it's uh, the oval size that we like the oval size. Is the really the, mat the material because uh, uh, basically. So we, we discovered this uh, and we, we discovered we were happy to, to use uh, this event because there is, uh, uh, the so the, there is the exchange of the oxygen between the internal and the external part as uh, let's say the wood, but uh, there is not the transmission of uh, you know, taste of uh, oak. Uh, right, right. But it's a very interesting, uh, you know, uh, way to use and so we in this moment do the vinification in three different uh, kind of uh, of beds okay and then when you're maturing the wine you always the wine's always in contact with the leaves correct yes yeah, a little bit in contact with the leaves not not too very long not okay. too short but uh, yes we do a little bit of uh, contact uh, with uh, with the leaves as well let's see okay and then finally, this is for both of you, but we always have to talk about wine and food, especially with, you know, Italian wine. So what are your favorite food pairings with Imarazzo? Mm. <laughs> probably a lot. But we are in Piedmont with the truffle. Uh -huh, really? Okay. Yes. Uh, or with the oyster. Okay. Uh, the pro the problem is the food. truffle are only in October. The oyster, we can get a good oyster, but it's not uh, the land. So we need to drink Timoras yeah. so we don't the rest <laughs> of the food. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. No, we've all uh, appetizer with the, with the cheese, the, the salami, or uh, yeah, mm. with agnolotto or uh, raviolo. Okay. Mm. As, okay. Also with the, I, I like very much also with the, uh, raw meat, the, come si dice, the um, carne cruda. Carne cruda. Yeah. Yeah. Tartar. Mm -hmm. ecco. Tartar. 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 Okay. okay. Yeah. Great. Or the fish. Okay. This is oh, great. No, but it's a, it's a wine, it's a foody wine anyway, eh? Timorasso is not, uh, you know, need, needs the food as a, almost all the Piemontese wines, uh, when you talk about Piemonte, you need uh, to, to think about wine and food. So very rarely people drink without having food. Are all yeah. wines with, uh, you know, character, uh, personality. And uh, so they need, uh, they, they, they change completely when they stand by themselves and when they are, uh, you know, drink uh, while eating. So yeah, absolutely. it's very rarely to think about uh, Piemonte, wine from Piemonte without food. You need to have always uh, something even simple to eat uh, while you are drinking because really taste uh, and uh, personality of the wine come uh, well, out. It, it, uh, it really changes food. with food, right? Yeah, I remember sure. I, had, I had lunch with, I'm sure you're both very good friends with her, but with um, Raffaella Bologna a few years ago and we were having lunch and she said, you know, the difference between the Italians and the Americans is that you people in America, you'll drink wine whenever you want. <laughs> said, with, in Italy, we only drink it with food. Yes, exactly. And I thought, that right. perfect, thought that was a perfect statement. No, no, but it, yeah. uh, she's completely right because it's like this. Uh, uh, are all wines that require, demand the food? because of the acidity, because of the tannins, because of this or that, but they need always, uh, you know, 
something to have uh, with. Okay, great. This has been, both of you are so engaging and so much fun to talk to and um, so passionate about your also. So, grazie per la opportunità. Grazie. Oh, grazie a te. And I trust that this is a great vintage. Grazie a te and thank people. you for, for... Oh, of course. Uh, thank you for, invi for inviting me. <laughs> of course, certamente. So, and, and hopefully we, we, both, we all get to see each other very soon. So it looks like I may be back I, in, I hope. in September. So it's time. It's, it's time. Yeah, because it's it's time. over time. Yeah, it's, it's past yeah. Time. So thank you again. Yeah. I, I appreciate everybody turning in today. And uh, hopefully the rest of the growing season is great. And you have a wonderful harvest. And uh, Viva Timorasso and, and uh, Forza Italia. Forza yeah. Italia with the, with the football. Also. Forza Italia. <laughs> there you go. Italia, yes. <laughs> that was great. That was great. So, okay. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Grazie Thank you. mille, Tom. Ciao, Lisa. Grazie. 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 Ciao, Ele. Grazie, ciao. Tom. Ciao a tutti. Grazie. Ciao. See you. Ciao, ciao. See you. Ciao, ciao. ciao. ciao.